Now, personally, I don't know about anybody else, but from my perspective, my opinion, I'm so thankful that a couple of years back, the WWE made the decision to take WrestleMania to two nights. Because what was it? WrestleMania 35? That show was like five hours long. It was too much. You get to the point where you're literally just gassed at the end of the show. If you have to go that long, it's probably not very good. And you could have trimmed some of the fat. So here you can avoid some of the fat trimming and actually add more, but you split it out over two nights. So you get two, three-ish hour shows, and that is so much better. It flows better, like you can watch on Saturday night for a few hours, and you're like, okay, that's cool. Let's pause, recharge, come back tomorrow night, do it again for a few hours, and it's great. I personally enjoy that. And I'm glad they made that decision. One of the things it also does is it creates more opportunities. And what I mean is you can have even more matches. Cool. I'm all for that. It also gives you the opportunity to have two WrestleMania main event matches versus the standard one. Also cool. No problem there for me. So we head into this year's WrestleMania. We all know what the night two main event is going to be. The match that closes out the entire show on Sunday night. It's going to be former AEW Executive Vice President and this year's Royal Rumble winner Cody Rhodes taking on the reigning, defending, undisputed, universal heavyweight champion of the world, the tribal chief, the head of the table, the leader of the bloodline, Roman Reigns. Now, some may argue it should be Sami Zayn instead of Cody Rhodes in that spot, while maybe some others might argue that Sami should try to political himself into that spot, maybe a la Daniel Bryan, and force your way into a triple threat. And I'm not here to stand in the way of that, I'm just saying. You're going to hear the arguments and have people that say that, and there is plenty to support that thought process. But for argument's sake... Instead of trying to get in a pissing contest, let's just assume it's Cody Rhodes versus Roman Reigns as the night two main event. And frankly, it should be. Now, is that the night two main event match that I personally would book? No. But based off of the participants, Cody hasn't faced this version of Roman Reigns. Cody's the Royal Rumble winner. Cody's had a lot put behind him. Roman's had a lot put behind him. There is nothing else right now that the WWE seems intent on doing for WrestleMania that can match up to this. This is the main event of the main events of WrestleMania this year. Period. Settled matter. Accepted. Which leaves open the discussion for what the night one main event should be. And you've probably got maybe three options that are being bantied about and discussed right now. One possibility is Asuka versus Bianca Belair. You've got the returning Asuka women's chamber match winner versus a long-ass reigning Raw women's champion in Bianca Belair. I'd have some confidence in them being able to deliver a high-quality main event WrestleMania-style match, especially Bianca Belair, because I've seen her in that main event night one spot before and really deliver. So if they landed there, I could accept it. But I'm sorry. Only so much. Because the story and the interest just isn't there for myself. And let's be clear, for most of the fans, it's not either. It, it, it's just not the right call to make. Putting Asuka and Bianca Belair in that spot is a representation of doing it for the wrong reason which is non-character related, non-storyline related, non-interest related. You're not making a truly business decision there. You're not truly making that determination based off of merit and deserving it. You're not. Another possibility is Rhea Ripley versus Charlotte Flair for the SmackDown Women's Championship. 
You got the women's Royal Rumble winner who's been featured pretty prominently for a while now against the most overforced wrestler this side of Randall Keith Orton. And of course, I mean the Botox bitch or self Charlotte Flair. Fuck having this match main event night one. I know the WWE has a massive hard on for Charlotte Flair. And every time she goes under the knife and gets another plastic surgery, they only seem more tied into her, more committed to forcing her down everybody's fucking throats. So of course they're going to try and shoehorn this bitch into yet another WrestleMania main event spot that she doesn't merit and she doesn't freaking deserve. She doesn't deserve it. And specifically when you're looking at this match, we've seen this match between these two people, granted for an NXT Women's Championship, but still, we've seen these two face off one-on-one -on -one at WrestleMania before. Kind of stunk. Kind of stunk. We've also seen Charlotte in several WrestleMania featured matches. And newsflash, they pretty much stunk. And anybody that pretends like any of them were really good, especially that Charlotte Flair was really good, it is because they've got this weird obsession with treating her like the female version of Randy Orton, and they haven't come to their senses yet, like it took so many people years to fucking come to their senses on Mr. RKO the Viper himself! The only other reason is... Your standards have lowered so much that you think bocce bitches doing all this shit is cool. It's not. It sucks. But even beyond, like, my, my distaste for Charlotte Flair as a talent or a wrestler and the way the WWE have tried to force her down everybody's throat, my bigger distaste here is that kind of feeling of the WWE looking to force a women's match into that night one main event slot. It's cool when you have those two main event slots, those two main event matches, one on night one, one on night two. And if a woman's feud, a women's match, justifies and merits that spot, then by all means, put it in that spot. A couple of years ago, Sasha Banks, Bianca Belair, merited the night one main event. You put it there. Great. That's where it should have been. The characters were over enough, the story was good enough, the interest was high enough to support that slot. But you certainly weren't going to do that, let's say, last year, when you got frickin' Stone Cold Steve Austin coming fucking back. Right? Nor should you have. Austin should have main evented night one of WrestleMania, as he did. Period. Forcing one of these two women's matches into that main event night one spot is doing it for the wrong reasons and not the right one. It's about a forcing an equality agenda. It's being overly political for the sake of it. I hate when people complain about, oh, this is all that woke going broke going wrong shit. No, this is just being stupid. But I'll give you this, is that if you put Asuka, Bianca Belair in the night one main event slot or Rhea Ripley and Charlotte Flair in the night one main event spot, they don't deserve that spot. They don't merit it. That's not equality. That's forcing shit to try and push an agenda or avoid a narrative. There was only one match this year that deserves that night one main event slot and everybody goddamn good and well knows that. Goddamn good and well knows that. That's the Usos against Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens for the tag titles. The only way I would back down off of that stance is if in Austin said he wanted to come back and wrestle again. You might have to put him in the night one main event slot. If The Rock came back and said, hey, I want to face somebody. Y'all might have to put him in the night one main event slot. If you had a long program and a big story of interest between, let's say, John Cena and Austin Theory. As much as I don't get the buzz behind Theory, as much as I've always thought Cena was overrated as shit, I'm also wise enough to understand from a business standpoint that Cena's going to bring attention with him, and if you were trying to launch off Theory, you'd do that in the Night One main event slot. 
I could understand that even if I didn't agree with it. But that's it. Those are three unlikely contingencies. So the only option is the Usos versus Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. Period. And could you imagine, if you're the WWE right now, Hunter or whoever named Vince might be in charge of creative, that you look at this card, look at the different matches, look at the different stories, and you say to yourself, yeah, look at the reaction Sami Zayn's getting. Let's put him in the middle of the card on night one. Fuck, for all we know, they'll make it the opening match on night one. These dumb sons of bitches. Oh, you'd laugh. Laugh it up. Yuck it up. This match has to go on last on night one. This is not up for negotiation. Period. You could have two opinions about it. The opinion that it belongs in the main event slot of night one because it deserves it and also out of fucking necessity for the flow of the night. Or two, you could have the wrong goddamn opinion about it. This is like thinking to yourself, and I'm not equating the story or the characters to the same. What I'm comparing is the thought process of having a match in the middle of the fucking show that nobody else could follow. When you look back at, let's say, WrestleMania 18, Hogan and Rock. Imagine thinking to yourself, it's Hogan, it's fucking Rock, it's Mania. But yeah, let's put Triple H and Jericho on last. <gasps> right? WrestleMania 24. You know, Edge and Taker put on a great Mania main event, but the match that should have closed that show was Flair and Michaels. Period. Nothing can follow that. It took... That was buried in the middle of the fucking show. That show didn't recover until you literally got to the main event. And then imagine thinking to yourself, hey, we got Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker squaring off at WrestleMania 25. Yeah, let's put him in the mid card. That's brilliant. That's such good shit. Look at how those shows were negatively impacted because of poor card placement for key matches. You put Sane and Owens against the Usos. Anywhere else except the night one main event slot, you're asking for fucking trouble. You are creating your own problem, and I feel absolutely no goddamn sympathy for you. Fuck Rhea Ripley and Charlotte Flair's match. Fuck Asuka and Bianca Belair's match. They ain't going to put on anything better this year than what the hell the Usos and Zayn and Owens are going to put on. The fans care too much. The story is too fucking good. I wish, personally, it was Zayn and, Zayn and Jay versus Jimmy and Solo for the fucking titles. Maybe have KO be a special enforcer or a guest referee. Got all types of possibilities of what you could do there. But this is what you got. But this has to be the night one main event. What possible, credible, logical argument could you put forth to say that Sami Zayn and the Bloodline story that has been so predominant in WWE over the past year doesn't deserve that spotlight of night one of WrestleMania's main event? You can't. At least if you want to be taken seriously. I'd love to hear from you in the comments and tell me just how right I am about this one. You want to disagree about it, fine, but just understand from Jump Street, you are fucking wrong. Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens versus the Usos must be the night one WrestleMania main event. There is no other realistic option here.